Let's dive deep into Cornell University's 2024-2025 admissions cycle supplement to the common application. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. And if you're interested in learning about whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America, visit areyouontracktogetin.com. Again, that's areyouontracktogetin.com, at which you will complete a free three-minute assessment. Your results will be emailed to you right away, and they will help you clarify whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America. Cornell Supplemental Writing, Supplemental Writing, thank you, uh, is bifurcated between the essay that all applicants have to respond to. This is first-year applicants. And the essay or essays that you have to respond to because of the specific school with that in Cornell University that you're applying to. So let's first discuss the catch-all essay, the one that you need to respond to as a first-year applicant regardless of the school of Cornell you are applying to. This year's Cornell essay for all applicants is as follows. We all contribute to and are influenced by the communities that are meaningful to us. Share how you've been shaped by one of the communities you belong to. Remember that this is an essay about you and your lived experience. Define community in the way that is most meaningful to you. Some examples of community you might choose from our family, school, shared interests, virtual, local, global, cultural. So here we are completely redefining words at Cornell, and that's just the way we roll these days at Cornell, right? Uh, Last year, they had a similar prompt. Last year's prompt um, was as follows. In the aftermath of the U.S. Civil War, Ezra Cornell wrote, quote, I would found an institution where any person can find instruction in any study, end quote. For over 150 years, Cornell University has remained deeply committed to Ezra's Ezra's vision. Explain how your life experiences will help inform your contributions to a learning community devoted to, quote, any person, any study, end quote. We encourage you to think broadly about your life experiences, including how local, e.g. family, school, neighborhood, or global communities you've been a part of have helped shape your perspective. The reason I'm sharing that is because I want to show you the evolution of Cornell's admissions committee's thinking from one cycle to the next. This year's prompt gives you a hint as to what Cornell admissions officers are really looking for from your response in 350 words, because you have up to 350 words to respond to this new prompt this year uh, that is about basically community, or it seems as though it's about community, but it's not just about community. It's also about specifically how the community has shaped you. Again, I want to make very clear, last year, the focus was on life experiences that applicants would harness in order to contribute to the Cornell learning community. But this year, we get a hint because of the rewording that the focus is squarely on one community The applicant has been shaped by, and that's a quote, shaped by, that's in the the prompt, and specifically how. That's your job, is to focus on one community you've been shaped by and show how that community has shaped you. All right, this is very important that you understand this. Cornell doesn't want muddled responses in this 350-word response, and that's why they are focusing their prompt so that they get more focused responses. All right, so uh, keep that in mind as you draft this one. I would always have a one to two sentence intro with a thesis, a body to support the thesis, and then a conclusion that goes a step beyond the thesis. And there you have a 350 word and nice size essay. That's not short, short essay like a 150 word or a 250 word. It's also not very long like a 400 word plus essay. So it's sort of right in the middle uh, and you need to... Um, Basically, keep the focus as much on you as possible in this community uh, because you got to share how you've been shaped by one of your communities. Don't just talk for 350 words about being Jewish and, and Judaism 
Instead, you got to then show how you have ran with that. How have you run with being Jewish? How has being Jewish shown itself in your daily life, if, if you're Jewish? I mean, you're probably everything else. There's a lot of other types of people in the world. Whatever you happen to be, black, gay, tall, fat, southern, northern, eastern, western, you name it. Uh, you want to pick one, one community you're a part of. Uh, and go all in on that, in my opinion. That's my opinion. I'm just one man. I'm not God. But you're on this video, so that's my advice. Go deep and narrow as opposed to broad and shallow. But also make sure that you're not just doing a book report on that community, but rather you're showing how you have been shaped by this one community you've chosen to focus on for these 350 words in this response. Now, all of the other writing you're going to do on the supplement for for the supplemental essays, at least, or essay on uh, Cornell's supplement to the 2024-2025 Common App, is uh, going to be focused on the school that you're applying to. So I will just say, you could, of course, name drop Cornell in your first response. You could throw a sentence or two in in the conclusion. Again, this is going a step beyond the thesis, like I like my conclusions to do for students I work with. You could always name drop how you're going to continue to run with that community as a student at Cornell at the end of your first essay. And you can name, specifically maybe name a way in which, you know, you'll get involved in that particular community and, and specifically how uh, at Cornell. You can absolutely do that. But for the remainder of your Cornell essay writing on the supplement for Cornell, you're going to be able to go really focus in on the academic side, the specific academic side. So don't feel like you need to go all in on talking about engineering here on this first essay because you'll have an opportunity to talk about what the engineering school cares most about in the engineering specific writing shortly. And we'll talk about that. Uh, if you feel like you are a part of a community of engineers as a 17 or 18 year old, then you could do that. You could do that, especially if you feel like you're not fleshing that idea out enough about what it means to be a young engineer in your engineer writing, specific writing in the engineering essay or essays. You'll see that in a second uh, or writing in a second then you could do that. But I'm all about trying to spread the wealth and not share the same thing again and again. So try not to have two similar essays between your Cornell general essay and your Cornell school specific essay or essays. All right. Cal's this year, this is a pain in the butt. College of Agricultural and Life Science, they're, they're liking to be different as always. So <laughs> um, by applying to Cornell, let's focus on their specific writing first. We're going in alphabetical order, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. By applying to Cornell's College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, CALS, you are also applying for direct entry into one of our 20 plus majors. From here, you would be part of a community dedicated to purpose-driven science, working within your major and across disciplines to tackle the complex challenges of our time. Why are you drawn to studying the major you have selected? And specifically, why do you want to pursue this major at Cornell Cal's? You should share how your current interest, related experiences, and or goals influence your choice. 500 words. So this is a hefty essay. This is a serious essay, and you need to have a full-fledged Intro paragraph with a thesis, several body paragraphs, a conclusion paragraph. Again, I like intro with a thesis, body to support the thesis, a conclusion that goes a step beyond the thesis. But you got to be specific. You got to be able to point to, um, you know, specific experiences and goals you have in this in this field, and you got to specifically get in the weeds with why agriculture and life sciences at Cornell Cal's as opposed to somewhere else where theoretically the major is also on offer. So you really got to get hyper-focused. I, I mean, this is a hard one. Uh, so take your time, flush it out. This needs to be highly, highly specific and also highly aligned with not Cornell overall, but you specifically, specific proof you can bring to the table. This is your closing argument as to your fit at Cal's, not just at any agricultural and life sciences program, but specifically to the major at Cal's or Cal's overall, why you feel like this is a marriage made in heaven. Uh, the optional short answer questions invite you to share additional information about your background, interests, and experiences as they relate to the aspects of the Cornell's Cal's mission, the Cornell Cal's mission. 
The content of any responses submitted will be included in the holistic review of your application, which is also the case for any optional additional information submitted as part of your Common App or updated through your Cornell application portal once you've applied. So they give you the opportunity at CALS to continue writing. Uh, you have a 100-word limit um, on both of these. Uh, at Cornell Cows, we aim to, so this is optional now, we aim to leave the world a better world better than we found it. So we seek out those who are passionate about serving the public good. Please elaborate on an experience, a specific experience where you were able to have a meaningful impact on people, a community, and or an environment of importance to you. Now, of course, it would be lovely if you could kill two birds with one stone here and talk about a time that relates to agriculture and life science where you did that. But it does not need to be the case. And I would rather you write some response here then leave it blank just because you don't have a time in which you were able to have a meaningful impact on people, a community or environment and or of importance to you. Uh, and it just didn't relate to, to agriculture and life science. Talk about something here as opposed to nothing. Use your space wisely. Go big or go home. I say this often. You do not want to leave anything blank because you're missing an opportunity there to further differentiate yourself. So take advantage of this optional opportunity. Uh, also optional though, um, Cornell Cal's is dedicated to pursue, to purpose driven, excuse me, purpose driven study of the agricultural life, environmental and social sciences and welcomes students with interests that span a wide variety of disciplines. Given our agricultural history and commitment to educating the next generation of agriculturalists, please share if you have a background or interest in agriculture, regardless of your intended major. An agricultural identity for the purpose of this question, is defined as cultivating soil, growing crops, and raising livestock. Example, farm, ranch, greenhouse, vineyard, etc. Select all that apply. A primary source of income for my parents slash guardians comes from ownership of or employment by an agricultural entity. My extended family owns or operates an agricultural entity. I have experience working in an agricultural entity. I have interest in pursuing a career in an agricultural entity. Please feel free to share additional details as well um, is an option. So you got to understand here that this is not something you're going to do if you have to literally make it up out of whole cloth. If you can't respond to the <laughs> um, the idea of, of fully, of honestly answering this, like if it just does not apply to you, then don't do it. Um, but if it, if you can even in any way squeeze out a shred of truth and respond to this, then you should. You should. Again, I'm all about not leaving any opportunity untackled. Um, so tackle this one if you can tackle this one. Uh, so these are brand new prompts um, relative to last year. This is sort of for cows, for cows. Let's look at the College of Architecture, Art, and Planning. It's the same that which existed last year. So I'm not going to go into too much depth on it um, because I think I covered it last year, but maybe I covered it two years ago. I don't know. I'm losing track. How do your interests directly connect with your intended major at the College of Architecture, Art, and Planning, AAP? Why architecture, B. Arch, Bachelor's of Arch, Art, BFA, or Urban and Regional Studies, URS, B. Arch? Applicants, please provide an example of how a creative project or passion sparks your motivation to pursue a five-year professional degree program. BFA applicants may want to consider how they could integrate a range of interests and available resources at Cornell into a coherent art practice. URS students may want to emphasize their enthusiasm and depth of interest in the study of urban and regional issues. You have 650 words for this response. This is another common app essay, but this is hyper-focused again to your fit with architecture, art, and planning. So it's extremely, this is like the Michigan essay on steroids. Like you've got to go on about multiple ways in which you, it, Cornell resonates with you and you should resonate with Cornell. Not Cornell writ large, but specifically the College of Architecture, Art, and Planning. You, This is a very compelling closing argument you need to make. You have 650 words, an intro paragraph with a thesis, several body pa paragraphs to support the thesis, ideally tackling one by one the specific points of alignment between you and Cornell's College of Architecture, Art, and Planning, and then a conclusion 
that says something new and doesn't just regurgitate what you've already said in different words, but says actually something new that closes the deal with Cornell's College of Architecture, Art, and Planning is certainly advised here. Um, you need to do your research. You need, and really the same thing with the first Cal's one, you need to do your research. You must. Um, so it's extremely important that you not wing this on Halloween night uh, for a November 1 early decision deadline. <laughs> Or late December, if you're applying regular to Cornell, you got to take days, if not weeks, to really learn about the particular score Cornell you're applying to so you can have a first draft of 700, 800, 900, maybe even 1,000 words with all the compelling in, uh, content you could potentially muster so that in the editing process, which of course I help students with all the time, you can hone it down to the best 650 final words. If your first draft is 650 words, you are screwed. Because then if you're really doing a good job of editing it and redrafting it, by the end, your final draft will be 400 words or fewer. And that's too short. You have 650 words with which to work in your final draft, so your first draft needs to be longer. Keep that in mind regardless of the exact response you are responding to based off the major you are selecting on the Cornell Supplement. The College of Arts and Sciences a prompt is also the same as that which existed last year. You have 650 words. It's a little more generic because, in general, because many arts and science kids don't know what they want to major in. At the College of Arts and Sciences, or they may switch majors, curiosity will be your guide. Discuss how your passion for learning is shaping your academic journey and what areas of study or majors excite you and why. Your response should convey how your interests align with the college and how you would take advantage of the opportunities and curriculum in arts and sciences. This very much aligns with Michigan's LSA essay because it's all about the curricular elements that exist within, in this case, Cornell's College of Arts and Sciences and how they resonate with you and how your experiences, values, and passions resonate with the College of Arts and Sciences at Cornell. So if you really do know what you want to major in there, you've got to go all in on describing why that major that exists at Cornell is so important to you, is so valuable to you compared to other times that major is offered at Penn or Georgetown or Case Western or Rochester or Brown or wherever else you're applying. Obviously, you're not going to mention those other schools, but if you could write the same essay for why you want to pursue that major at other colleges, then you have failed to do what you need to do on this essay, which is you need to be able to convey not just fit for your major generally, but your fit for the major at Cornell and the way in which that major is offered at Cornell. If you don't yet know what your major is, then focus on the general way in which the curriculum is unfurled at the College of Arts and Sciences in the overall context of the value system that exists within the College of Arts and Sciences and Cornell overall. But again, you need to basically write a love letter here toward to, excuse me, the College of Arts and Sciences at Cornell, regardless if you're going all in on the major or majors you're looking at, or you were undecided about major, you, you need to still write it in such a way where you can never write the same essay to Penn. You can never write the same essay to Georgetown. If it's something you could change one or two words for and it could go to any other college, you have failed to write the right essay for the College of Arts and Sciences. Again, I recommend the first draft being longer than your final draft. So your first draft, if you're really passionate about writing about all the ways in which you would take advantage of the opportunities and curriculum at the College of Arts and Sciences at Cornell should be... 700, 800, 900 words minimum. So your final draft can be 650 words. And again, you in your conclusion, want to say something new. You don't just re want to restate in new words whatever you wrote in your intro paragraph. In the Cornell Jeb E. Brooks School of Public Policy, which is also having a prompt the same as last year, you have a prompt that is also asking you for a 650-word response. Why are you drawn to studying public policy? Drawing on your experiences, tell us about why you are interested in your chosen major and how attending the Brooks School will help you achieve your life goals. 650 words, tackle the prompt. Keep the prompt at the top of the page as you type. Don't just look at the prompt once and then wing it from there. This is true with all of the prompts. These are 650 word essays. You must stay focused or you could go down a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. So it's extremely important that you tackle the full prompt, not just why you're drawn to studying public policy, but then you need to draw on your experiences and tell why you are interested in your chosen major and specifically how attending the Brooks School of Public Policy will help you achieve your life goals. If you haven't done all of that by the end, you have failed, again, to do as specific of an essay as you need to do in order to make this really resonate with the application readers over at Cornell. Um, yes, there are not a lot of public policy schools at the undergraduate level, 
But if you could write it to any other public policy major or school at a different school, again, you fail to do the job you need to do to really convey fit for the academic program that exists on offer at the Jeb E. Brooks School of Public Policy at Cornell. For the Cornell S.C. Johnson College of Business, uh, this is also a prompt that was the same as last year. What kind of business student are you? Using your personal academic or volunteer work experiences, describe the topic or issues that you care about and why they are important to you. Now, you don't just want to regurgitate a resume entry here. So be aware of that. I'm going to talk about the resume in a minute overall. But your response should convey how your interests align with the school to which you are applying within the Cornell S.C. Johnson College of Business. There is, of course, the Charles H. Dyson School of Applied Economics and Management and the Peter and Stephanie Nolan School of Hotel Administration. Hyper-specific. You must get hyper-specific and this is your closing argument. You are a lawyer making the case for you uh, to get in, in this case, to Cornell's S.C. Johnson College of Business. Be as specific as you can. If you could write this to Warden, you have failed. If you could write this to Notre Dame Business, you have failed. If you could write this to any business school, you have failed. It must be only written bespoke to Cornell's S.C. Johnson College of Business and the major you know you may want to pursue there within the particular school within the S.C. Johnson College of Business you know you're aiming for. Uh, get specific. This requires research. This is why I always leave my supplemental essay with writing to the end. I complete the resume with students first, then I complete the common up essay with students next, and then I move on to the supplemental writing because the level of writing, the type of genre of writing that this is, is a personal persuasive research essay. The common app essay is just a personal persuasive essay. And the resume is just a black and white document of what you've achieved objectively. But you get more subjective as you go along from resume to common app essay to supplemental essays. And this essay in particular requires legwork on your part. It's a heavy lift. You've got to learn more about the SC Johnson College of Business before you start writing this essay. You have 650 words. You cannot hide. You cannot fake your way through a 650-word essay. This is true of all the 650-word essays or even the 500-word essays on this supplement, uh, depending on the school you're applying to at Cornell. You can't fake it. You can't fake it till you make it. You got to actually know what you are talking about. Otherwise, they're going to see that you have a Swiss cheese strategy. You have holes in your argument, and it's not going to work out for you. So please take the time necessary to draft, draft, redraft, re-research, and you're going to have the best final draft possible. The College of Engineering always likes to do something different at Cornell. Instructions, all engineering applicants are required to write two long essays and four short essays. <laughs> the long essays, they're actually not that long, 200 words each. Fundamentally, engineering is the application of math, science, and technology to solve complex problems. Why do you want to study engineering? This is all about you. So don't get talking about Cornell here. This is just all about you, your motivations, your goals. Prom and I would still have a one-sentence intro with a thesis, a several sentence body, and then a conclusion. But again, it's much tighter. 200 words is not long at all. And then even though they're calling it long. Question two, why do you think you would love to study at Cornell? This is where you need to talk about Cornell Engineering specifically and the programs on offer there or the program on offer there that is highly different than that which exists elsewhere. Otherwise, if you could write this response to any other engineering school, whether it be Wash U or Penn or any other, you know, top end engineering school, you are screwed. You don't want to be able to write something that you could write to any of those schools because it's not hyper specific enough. You got to get specific with Cornell here uh, with the second 200 word response for Cornell engineering. Then you need to respond to four more questions in 100 words each. What brings you joy Okay, I guess there wasn't enough joy on last year's supplement for engineering, uh, supplemental writing for engineering. So they want to get to know you happy-wise. They want to get to know what brings you joy. This does not need to be specific to engineering. This could just be something you do with your sister or it could be something you do as a hobby over the summers. They just want to get to know you better. Now, if it does intersect with engineering in a way that you have not yet talked about your love or passion for engineering, of course you can include it. But you need not include something related to engineering here. Question two, what do you believe you will contribute to the College of Engineering community beyond what you've already detailed in your application? What unique voice will you bring? This is where you can talk about your unique differentiated perspective or experiences that you've maybe not been able to touch on yet with Cornell Engineering, uh, especially in that first uh, response, the longer response of fundamentally engineering is the study of, you know, that one. 
um, what, why do you want to study engineering? This is more about not why you want to study it, but what you're going to bring to the table that will add diversity, for lack of a better word, to the conversations going on in engineering labs and classrooms at Cornell. Good luck. A uh, question number three, what is one activity club team organization work slash volunteer experience or family responsibility that is especially meaningful to you? Please briefly tell us about its significance to you. Again, don't treat this like a 100 word resume entry. Hopefully you're gonna do a resume. We'll talk about that in a minute. Instead, treat this as a jump. Uh, you can mention obviously what that one club activity team organization or worker volunteer experience or family responsibility was that was meaningful to you, but the vast majority of your 100 words here needs to be about showing and telling what you take from it and why it's been significant to you. How has it shaped who you are in a way that would matter to the engineering powers that be, powers that be, excuse me, at the College of Engineering at Cornell. Again, very few number of words. You can't write a full-fledged essay, but you can have a one-sentence intro, several-sentence body, and a one-sentence conclusion. And then finally, Question four, what is one award you have received or achievement you have attained that has meant the most to you? Please briefly describe its importance to you. Again, this is not a biography on the award. Instead, it's a window into what you value. So even if you've not won a formal award, you can talk about something you have achieved that has been meaningful to you. They want to get to know the person behind the applicant, the person behind the student. And really here, you want to focus on the briefly describe why this attainment, award, or achievement was important or is important to you to this very day. It could also dovetail with, you know, why, what you value in Cornell, if you can fit it in. With the College of Human Ecology, this prompt for uh, the College of Human Ecology is a prompt that is reworded from a similar one that was on the uh, Human Ecology uh, portion last year. How has your decision to apply to the College of Human Ecology, CHE, been shaped and informed by your related experiences? How will what you learn through CHE and your chosen major impact your goals and plans for the future? Your response should demonstrate how your interests and aspirations align with CHE's programs and mission. Refer to our essay application tips before you begin. You, again, have 650 words for this one. This is a research persuasive essay. It's a research persuasive essay personal essay. So you need to, again, connect the dots between you and your value system and CHE's uh, offerings and value system in order to make this one really work. Again, I would recommend first draft be longer than 650 words so you can narrow it down to the best 650 words for your ultimate final draft. Again, I like the idea of a thesis with an intro in the first paragraph, several body paragraphs that support the thesis, and then a conclusion paragraph that goes a step beyond the thesis and says something new and intriguing. Uh, But again, this requires research first and a lot of time to draft. And then finally, 650 words for the School of Industrial and Labor Relations using your personal academic or volunteer slash work experiences. Describe the topics or issues that you care about and why they are important to you. Your response should show us that your interests align with the ILR school. Again, the more specific you can get proving that there is proof in the pudding about why you are a good fit for ILR, the better. And also why IRL would be extremely lucky to have you, the better. Uh, Again, you need to point to specific instances that describe the topics or issues that you care about and why they are important to you. This, again, needs to show specifically interest in industrial and labor relations. So it shouldn't just be about why you like soccer, unless you want to talk about unionizing the soccer team, I guess. But, But you get my point. It has to relate back to your interest in what you want to study of course, um, at ILR, and also potentially what you want to do in your career uh, related to themes and topics and then disciplines related to industrial and labor relations. Now, finally, I want to make very clear, none of these are resume entries. You need to list your top 10 activities on the Common App Activities page. And for any other juicy details about what you've achieved since the summer after eighth grade and later, You should be putting together a full-fledged extracurricular resume. I have a course called How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. You can find that linked below this video. And it's less than an hour in length. It's $19. This is a no questions asked, smartest thing you could do is purchasing that course. 
You may never want to work with me one-on-one throughout the college admissions process. That's, that's okay. But you will be a fool not to buy this course because that course is going to teach you how to put together an extracurricular resume that's going to effectively and articulately uh, share with Cornell the depth and breadth of what you've achieved in the extracurricular round throughout your high school years in the summers intervening your, in between your high school years. Uh, so please uh, purchase that course because I want you to be able to upload an optional resume to your Cornell supplement. They give you the opportunity to do that traditionally at Cornell. Do not skip that opportunity. Even if you have just one additional sentence to share about one of your extracurricular activities that did not fit into the Common Apps Activities page, you should be putting together an extracurricular resume that you upload to the Cornell Supplement. Even if you just have five activities throughout your entire high school career, you probably have more to say about them that would fit in the Common App Activity than that would fit in the Common App Activities page. That's why you need to put together an extraordinary extracurricular resume. And also, most applicants to Cornell, of course, will have. 20 activities or 13 activities or 17 activities far beyond the 10 activities that you can fit a very short skeletal description for in the activities page of the Common App. And that's another reason why you want to have a full-fledged, unabridged extracurricular resume about yourself in the Common App supplement for Cornell because they have traditionally given you the opportunity to upload such a supplement, such, such a supplemental resume. And that's why, again, you want to take my How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume short course. Don't get it twisted. I'm not telling you to write a book resume. I'm not saying to put together a five or three page resume. Actually, I recommend no longer than a two page resume, but you can fit a heck of a lot more in a two page uploadable PDF resume on the supplements of the Cornell uh, app, a common app, the common app supplement for Cornell than you could ever fit on the common app activities page or the additional information section of the common apps writing page. So please take advantage of that. And that's why my how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume short course even exists. And then finally, I'm offering a new product during the 24-25 admission cycle. It's called My Pre-Read. To learn more about it, go to mypreread.com. When you have finished your common app and you want to know if it's as strong as possible and whether or not in its current condition your chances of admission to Cornell are impressive, inconclusive, or inadequate, you want My Pre-Read. Getting My Pre-Read now means having me review your entire application, just like an admissions officer or admissions committee at Cornell will review it later and receiving by email no later than the time you reserve a comprehensive report highlighting what I think is working and what I think is not working on your full Common App and your Cornell Common App Supplement. If you've yet to submit your Common App, my pre-read may motivate you to make adjustments to it before your deadline. If you've already submitted your Common App, my pre-read will prepare you for what I deem to be your likely admissions outcome at Cornell. University. This is infotainment. It's a fun little product that I'm offering. You may just do it for kicks and giggles, as they say. Kicks and giggles. Uh, as you wait for your early decision or regular decision uh, notification from Cornell on their application portal after you've already submitted it. Or you may do it in October or September of your senior year before you even hit submit because you, you want an extra pair of expert eyes on your application before you hit submit and you want to give the old college try. Whatever the case may be, go to mypreread.com to learn more about my pre-read. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process, go to my website, collegemeister.com. Until, until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, even though there's a lot to cover, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.